Hey everybody, this is Stren from ExtremeRigs.net. We're just going to do a quick unboxing of the very new IB Bridge processor along with the Asus ROG Maximus 5G uses a C77 board. So let's see what we have in here. Oh, fancy box for memory. This is a 32 gig, 4 8 gig sticks. And um, it's a pretty big box for only four sticks, but we'll take a look at that in a second. Very small box for the 3770K. This is the top of the line Ivy Bridge processor right now. It's the unlocked quad core with hyper threading. And uh, yeah, pretty small box. We'll open that up again in a second. Here it is. Maximus 5G. It's a pretty small box that I'm used to. Normally I'm working on full ATX cases. But as you can see back here, we have the little Fractal Design Arc Mini, um, which is a mini ATX case, and that's what it's going to be used for this build. So, like most ROG motherboards, you get this little flap here. Normally you get to see the motherboard underneath here. Normally there's a plastic area so you can see it. Um, I guess they decided not to do that. Uh, so they're just giving you the blurb which no one reads. Um, some pictures on the back. No one really cares about that. So let's go ahead and open Alright, so now we get the uh, picture. Um, this is pretty standard ROG kind of style. Um, although normally, normally there's a door at the bottom and you slide these out. So you can see this is not quite as easy. So here is the motherboard. You can see the four DIMM slots, the CPU socket for uh, any Ivy Bridge or Sandy Bridge non-extreme processor. And this is really tiny compared to the extreme processor. The socket 2011 chips are way huge. You can see the pretty beefy VRM heat sinks. Um, Ivy Bridge, despite running very hot, doesn't use as much power as Sandy Bridge did. Um, there's also pretty beefy um, heat sink on the South Bridge. Again, probably not much power here. Um, heat sinks are normally more for looks on the South Bridge these days. So let's take the lid off. Lift this out a bit so we can look at the um, ports. See they're advertising the Intel. Uh, gigabit network. Uh, big fan of Intel for uh, Nix. So it's nice they're including that. I'm not sure it's worth the sticker, but you know it's nice that they have it. You got four USB ports here. Uh, looks like eSATA, HDMI um, for the integrated graphics on the um, CPU. Two more USB 3s, external SATA. Actually, that's not external SATA. I don't know. I'm not familiar with HDMI's that much, so some sound um, sound uh, sound card outputs, USB 2s, and the white one is normally the ROG Connect. That's for the uh, remote overclocking, so you can connect another computer and um, overclock your computer while it's powered up using that without installing any software. So uh, that's basically the board. You can also see there's a little Supreme FX cover over here, that's for the sound card, um, which is a pretty, uh, pretty sad thing. You've got the, the start reset buttons, um, debug codes on the LEDs over here, you got 24 pin, your 8 pin, uh, plenty of fan connectors around, you got one, two, I'm not sure if that, that looks more like a jumper there, so only one, two, let's see where else, three, only three actually, but I guess it's a small board. Normally on ROG boards, I'm used to seeing like seven or eight fan, uh, fan headers. So, there we go. Um, up to the usual standards of kind of ROG style. Um, the red and black theme with nothing that's kind of really ugly going on there. So, that's the motherboard. In terms of what else you get, you get a nice little um, door hanger. I'm gaming, do not disturb. Fairly amazing. Um, the 
This is the ROG Connect cable. Again, it's white and it says ROG on it, so you know it's not a normal USB cable. So it probably is a normal USB cable. Uh, SATA cables. Um, there are the black and white ones. ASUS have these as the, the 6 gig cables and these are the 3 gig cables. Pretty much you always know um, they're interchangeable. A 3 gig cable pretty much always works as a 6 gig cable. I really don't worry about it. Pick the one that looks better for you. The only thing I'd say to ASUS on this is you always have right angles to straights. And sometimes, um, particularly with SSDs, if you're mounting a lot of SSDs close together, you need straight to straight. You can't make the right angles work. So please stop shipping only right angle to straight cables. So we have a little add on circuit board, it seems. Let's see what this is. The MPCIe combo. So it has the M SATA connector. Um, so pretty cool. Gives you that extra versatility. A lot of the boards have that already on there. A little SLI collector, connector, sorry. Uh, of course, this board does do SLI. Um, the nice backplate with the ROG symbol on it and, you know, blacked out. What I would like to see them do is black out the inside too. And the usual headers for the power and USB. One thing I'd say is, um, why aren't these also with the theme? You, know, you got white and blue, why not make them both black with white text? It would work a lot better with the theme of the motherboard. You got a bunch of um, stickers to attach to your uh, SATA cables in case you have so many SATAs that you get lost. I don't know anyone who uses these. I mean, you only have a couple of cables normally. And even if you have like 20, I mean, is it that big a deal to really uglify it with these stickers? And the user's guide with the drive disc and some stickers in there. So, um, that's it for the unboxing of the motherboard. We'll just do the, uh, the chip in the memory real quick. The packaging isn't quite as nice as the Rampage Extreme that I'm used to, but it's pretty close. I mean, and plus, at the end of the day, it's not really about the packaging. Uh, you're already getting the motherboard, and I'd rather have better motherboard features or even, dare I say, accessories in a pretty box. But yeah, that's me. So, here we go. Here's the um, processor 3770K. I'm not sure if you can see it on there, but you can see the Integrated heatsink is pretty small. And for those of you who don't know, these chips run really hot. Partly that's um, because of the die shrink. Normally people think, oh, the die shrink makes everything cooler. Well, it does usually decrease the power. Um, you can see here we have a really pitiful heatsink. I mean, look at that thing. That's that's barely going to dissipate anything, so we'll be throwing that away pretty quick. Um, so here's the thing. Lowering the size of the transistors affects your things. It allows you to run really lower voltages. Um, it increases your kind of maximum frequency. Um, it also increases leakage, so your, your static current is normally a little higher. You can see the chip here. It's really, really small. Um, but, you know, for, specifically for Ivy Bridge, they did reduce the power draw a little. Not as much as they initially said they were going to. Um, however, the chip is so much smaller now. You've gone from 32 to 22 nanometers, so the actual area of the chip is way smaller. And what that means is, um, even though the power is reduced slightly, the die is running way hotter. There's also rumors that they didn't use the normal um, kind of metal, kind of solder stuff they used to attach the die to the um, heat spreader here, which is the metal part. 
the die doesn't take up all the space underneath here, it's, it's more like a thin, thin section of it. Um, and normally on the previous chips for quite a while, they basically use this really um, good heat contact between them. Um, it's almost like soldering. Um, it lets the heat flow that easily, and now they've just used this kind of crappy thermal paste under there, according to rumors. So that's also partly hurting with the temperature. So these overclock decently, but they don't overclock like Sandy Bridge did. You know, people were hitting five really easily on air with Sandy Bridge. I mean, not every chip, but a good amount of chips could hit five on air. Um, and with, you know, liquid benching at 5.5 was, you know, sometimes you had to find a good chip to get it to 5.5, but it was fairly common. It wasn't out of the extraordinary. These chips are supposed to do a lot better under um, phase um, or you know anything sub-zero, liquid nitrogen. Um, apparently, you know they do very well. You'll get to six plus gigahertz, but under normal kind of water or air cooling, you're going to be bouncing off the um, you know the heat limit, the temperature limit, way before you get up there. I mean. People are having a hard time reaching 4.8, 4.9 without hitting 100 degrees C. So it's a really hot chip. So just bear that in mind. If you want extreme clocks, you need to go to sub zero and don't expect great overclocking results. However, the core itself is somewhat faster than Sandy Bridge, so it kind of makes up for some of the difference. And of course, the other big feature is it supports PCI Express 3, which is important for some of the gamers out there. So that's the chip. Nothing much to show you in the package. So let's get that out of the way and take a look at this fancy pants memory box. Again, you know, sometimes I wish companies would give you something more than a fancy box, but we'll see what else is in here. Um, normally I care more about the price and the performance than a box, but okay. sometimes when you spend a lot of money on something, you feel like you should get a nice box anyway. I'd say Corsair, they're very good at that, they have power supplies, they, you know, they put, put the gold series in those kind of fake velvet bags. Inside, after all that, we have two plain brown boxes for the memory. Which seems kind of stupid. Here we go. Uh, so these, this is really a four by eight gig set. So thirty-two gig. Um, so I'm guessing by the looks of it, they just designed two eight gig mesh pairs. So you can see, um, you get a RAM fan. I'm not a big fan of these. Um, usually you don't need them unless you're really overclocking the memory pretty heavily. Um, there we go. So I guess this kit is more aimed at the X79, the SOC 2011 CPUs, like the 3930K, the 3820. Because in this kit, you're getting two of these. And on X79, you have the memory split in two banks either side of the CPU. So you can see why they're sending you two of these. However, for Sandy Bridge, you only need one, if at all. So here it is. This is the Ripjaw Z series. This is a 2133 memory with um, CL11. Not the fastest CAS ratings, but it's 1.5 volts, which is for a 24-7 workstation, I don't really like to go above 1.5 on Sandy or Ivy. And 2133 is pretty much fast enough for this workstation, so... Plus, the red kind of matches the uh, ROG theme. So, uh, in a few minutes I'll start building this, and then we'll do a follow-up video to see it all mounted in the Fractal Design Arc Mini case. And then we can uh, do a final review.